What's up everyone, Takedown here, welcome back to another video. Finally, a lot more stats and the price for both the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 have finally been announced. And that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. I'm going to be talking about both the Xbox Series X and S and the PlayStation 5, both disc and digital versions. And at the end of this, I'm going to be talking about which console I'm going to be going for this year and when I think I'm going to be purchasing it for myself. Let's get this started. So for the next generation of consoles, it's going to be really exciting in my opinion. Of course, Xbox and PlayStation for years have been battling. And in my opinion, PlayStation has always been way better. They've always produced a lot more sales. And with these stats here, what I'm going to be sharing is, in my opinion, the decision making of who I feel is going to be having the upper edge going into this year for these new generation of consoles. I honestly think PlayStation is going to be doing great like they always do. And I think they're going to get a lot more sales because of it. So let's start off with the prices for both the regular PlayStation 5 with the disc and the Xbox Series X. So both consoles have a starting price at $499. Now that is for the console only. That is not a bundle with a game or anything else. That is just the price for the console. So they're going to be selling just the consoles this year, I'm assuming, based on the stats that they released with the price point at $499. That seems like it's just going to be for the console for both consoles. So that's pretty interesting how they're the exact same price this year. For the dimensions, Xbox One is 5.9 inches wide, 5.9 inches deep, and 11.8 inches tall, whereas the PlayStation 5 is 8.7 inches wide, 3.9 inches deep, and 15.7 inches tall. So the PlayStation 5 is a little bit bigger of a console. Now for the resolution, PlayStation 5 is 4K, and it does support 8K and basically the same thing for Xbox Series X. So they are great with the resolution as well. Now for the storage, both consoles are doing these solid state drives this year, which is amazing. And I absolutely love that because that is the better uh, storage in my opinion. But what is interesting is the size difference. So Xbox is going with one terabyte, which is in my opinion, standard. And that's what games should have nowadays. Whereas PlayStation 5 for the first gen of PlayStation 5, it is going to be 825 gigabytes, which to me is a crazy made up number. That's just to me so random. Of course, the PlayStation 4 started out with 500 gigabytes. And then eventually with the Slim and the Pro versions, they were one terabyte. But starting off at 825, to me, that just seems like a random number. And the disk drives, both of them do include a 4K Blu-ray disk drive. So that's the difference between the disk version for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Now for the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition and the Xbox Series S. So the price is a little bit different for both these consoles. The PlayStation 5 Digital version is $399, whereas Xbox Series X, S is going to be $299. So there is $100 cheaper for the Xbox digital version in as opposed to the PlayStation 5 digital version. PlayStation 5 is $100 more for their digital version. Now the dimensions, the PlayStation 5 looks to be pretty well the same exact size for both the PlayStation 5 and the digital PlayStation 5. Whereas the Xbox Series S is smaller than the Xbox Series X. The Xbox Series S is 2.5 inches wide, 3.9 inches deep, and 10.8 inches tall. So it's really smaller compared to the basic version for the Xbox Series S X. Sorry. The resolution is way different for the Xbox compared to PS4. PS4 for the digital version can still support 4K and 8K, whereas Xbox Series S 
is 1440p, 120 frames per seconds, but it can support 4K, so a little bit less of a resolution for Xbox Series S. Now, the storage capacity for PlayStation is to be announced. They did not mention it yet, but for the Xbox Series S, is going to be 512 gigabytes solid state drive. I'm assuming, in my opinion, with PlayStation 5 being the same exact size for both digital and the regular version with the disc, I'm assuming it's going to have the same exact storage size for both PlayStation 5. So I'm assuming it's going to be 825 gigabytes for the digital version for the PlayStation 5. But it makes sense for the Series S to be less gigabytes, less storage space. Even though they don't have the disk drive, the console itself is slimmer than the Series X. So those are the basic versions, the basic differences between both of the Xbox series this year and both of the PlayStation 5s that are going to be released. Now, it's going to be interesting, and I think it's definitely going to be a war, definitely going into the holidays this year, seeing if what is going to happen, because the Xbox is actually going to be released first. Xbox is going to be released on November 10th, whereas PlayStation is going to be released on the 15th. So that might have a lot of deciding factors on sales. I was expecting to have both of them released the same exact day, but that is just not the case. Xbox is going to be the 10th, PlayStation is going to be the 15th of November. So that right there is pretty interesting, but that still leaves the holiday sales for this year. Are these consoles going to be on sale discounted for the holidays? Preferably Black Friday, which is the last Friday in November. If they're already released two weeks prior to that, I really hope they're going to be on sale, hopefully 50% off. I just don't see it happening. But I think depending on how sales go the first couple weeks, Christmas I really hope to see them on sale because that is when I really would like to purchase it. And I'm the type of person that whenever a console gets released, I never like buying it that year. I like waiting a year. That way all the bugs are out of it. All of the system stuff, everything is working for it. So whenever I get my console and I start playing it, everything is working. There's not a mad support of updates pending every single week or multiple times a week. I can just play and enjoy the system. All the bugs are already taken out. But this year with the PlayStation 5, I'm really debating on purchasing it right away. Number one, I saved up enough money to do so. Number two, I think it's going to be interesting. And I do like some of the PlayStation exclusives. So right now, between the Xbox and the PlayStation 5, which would I go with? For me, PlayStation 5 all day. And I think I'm going to go for the disc version. So the $499 one. Reason for that is because even though I do have a lot or most of my games are digital, I still like to play and purchase games on disc because, for example, if the internet is out or whatever the case might be and I don't have access to those digital games, I can still have access to the disc game. All I have to do is put the disc in the system and play it. The reason it's like that for me is because I game share with my friend Jack. So when the internet's out, digital games you can't play. So that is the biggest decision maker for me. But what is really going to be on the line for me getting it this holiday season is number one, what the sale price is going to be. I'm hoping it's going to be on sale because I not only want to buy the console, I always like buying one year subscription. Now I'm really curious with the PlayStation Plus for the PlayStation 4, if that's going to carry over onto the PlayStation 5. If you are going to have backwards compatibility, I'm hoping that the PlayStation Plus and also PlayStation Now, when I purchase the PlayStation 5, are going to be able to be used for both systems. I really hope that I don't have to buy another year of PlayStation Plus just for the PlayStation 5. And I also am curious to see what games are going to be backwards compatible. I did see recently that it's not going to be all games like people expected. And for the most part, it's going to be PlayStation 4 games. So... A lot of my games on my PlayStation 4, I'm really hoping I get a chance to play them on the PlayStation 5 backwards compatibility. So that is really going to be cool, but I'm definitely going to be waiting on getting the console 
until all that stuff is announced or until after it's been released and people share their opinions and share what the backwards compatibility is and share what the console actually can deliver, then I might do it as well. And the other thing is, of course, the PlayStation 5 only has 825 gigabytes. And I'm the type of gamer that I need at least three terabytes. So for the PS4, I have an external hard drive that I plug into the PS4 and it gives me an extra three terabytes. Now that right now is half full. I'm hoping to use that for the PlayStation 5, to be honest with you. But that depends on a few things. Number one is the console going to be able to, at launch, be able to have an external hard drive. I know the PS4 at launch... It wasn't able to be, but with updates on the console, then it was later added. So I don't know if at launch they're going to have that or not. I hope that they are. And I really like a lot of things about the PlayStation 5 this year. I absolutely love the controller. I like the design of it. I don't know if I'm going to go for the white PlayStation 5 or not, just because for me, I think that would age and either turn yellow or just look dirty over time. But I really think I might purchase a black version. I think they just look better at console if it was black. So these are my thoughts right now on the PlayStation 5. Will I purchase one at the end of the year? It depends on backwards compatibility. It depends on what games on the PlayStation 4 I can play. And if I can play the disc versions of PS4 games that I bought. And it depends on PlayStation Plus. If I have it on the PS4... Will it carry over? Or do I have to buy a brand new subscription for the PS5? How is that going to work? Is PlayStation Now going to be on PlayStation 5? These are all things that are a question right now that after at least it's launched, I'm hoping to get some kind of answer, whether it being yes, no, or maybe in a future update they will. Something. I just want to decide. And of course, sales. If it's going to be on sale Black Friday, I might get it because here in Canada, Black Fridays are not as extreme and dangerous as they are in the United States, so hopefully it is so I can get it. And also, if not, hopefully around Christmas it is, but it all depends on everything I mentioned, backwards compatibility, sales, price, and everything else. And there is some PlayStation 5 exclusives that I would like to purchase this year, so it'd be interesting. I have a list of a few games right now, I think five games that I want to purchase this year, Preferably, I want to purchase them on the PS4, but it depends on the PS5. If I get it, if it might be cheaper, if the games are going to be on sale for the PS5, that's something I might want to look into as well. So comment down below what you guys think of the Xbox and PlayStation 5. Which one are you likely going to go with? Are you going to be buying it at launch or are you going to be waiting a year? If everything stat-wise that I'm looking for to confirm if the PS5 is going to have it, if it ends up not, and I end up not getting it this year, this holiday season, I will be getting it next year. So if I don't get it this year, I will be getting it next year. So what do you guys think? Are you going to go get PlayStation or are you going to get Xbox? Let me know in the comments below. And also which version are you going to get? The Series X, the Series S, PS5, or the digital PS5? Let me know. I can't wait to see what you guys think. And I can't wait for these consoles to be released. I have a lot of video ideas once I get the PS5 to do, and I have a lot of things I can't wait to share with you guys. And of course, I love gaming, and I love bringing that to the channel. So I'm going to leave this video here. Please take care. Peace.